So trying to demonstrate the problem my front differential has. So as you can hear, it's in two-wheel drive and the operation of the locker is pretty noisy. But if I hold this wheel and you try to spin it, it hits a point where even in two-wheel drive it locks up. You can hear it. It's providing a lot of resistance on this wheel. It's definitely not freewheeling. Something un very uncool is going on with the differential. So I'm going to pull the diff, take it apart, and uh, show you guys what it looks like. This has the torque locker in it, obviously. Alrighty, guys. So the Can-Am had a bunch of problems at Holopal last time I took it out there. Um, even in, in two-wheel drive, the front end was randomly engaging, making it very hard to turn. It was making a lot of really loud, nasty, popping, ratcheting noises. The locker, I thought the locker was blown up. Well, I took the locker apart, and it looked fine. So it turns out that um, torque locker has changed the way they tell you to delete the visco lock now they have you go through and literally remove all the clutches all this stuff all the visco fluid you totally gut the entire let's see if I can find the rest of the clutches this is the clutches you totally gut the entire visco lock out of that half the differential and then put it back together basically that's it everything oiled so um what the instructions i got did not say to do that they said hey you can do a quick install or if you want you can uh, delete the visco lock by drilling a hole in this thing here yada 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 and um, no big deal, you don't really have to do it. The new instructions for the locker say, we highly recommend you delete the visco lock, completely take out all the clutches because it's causing these problems. The problems it's causing, locking in in two-wheel drive, popping, ratchet noises, the exact symptoms I have. So Torque Locker got some feedback on this thing um, and they addressed the issue. They put out you know, a new manual with the new ones. I wish they would have emailed me and told me, hey, we're having this issue, you know, whatever, but I guess that's too much to ask. Um, but anyways, if you ever had an issue like that with an aftermarket part, it always helps to go and download the latest version of the manual and have the right documentation. So with this lift kit from Super ATV, the directions my lift kit came with didn't say anything about this axle being really hard to seat. Um, when I re-downloaded the instructions, it's all over the instructions that this axle has a problem popping out and that you pretty much have to hammer into the differential and make sure it's properly seated and all kinds of stuff like that. So um, moral of the story is if you're having you know, troubleshooting issues or you're trying to figure something out with an aftermarket part, um, don't always go off the manual that came in the box. Go on the website, the manufacturer's website, and see if you can download a more recent rev of the manual because it will have a much more useful information. Now, I really hoped that this locker had all the kinks worked out of it before I bought it because I did wait a little while after it came out, but unfortunately, that's not the case, so I had to rebuild my differential three times. Now, first time to get a broke piece of axle, second time to install the locker, and the third time to completely remove visco lock. So there's no clutches, there's no visco fluid, there's no visco seal, visco o-ring, all that's done. I'll post a link in the description of the new manual for anyone that's having these visco lock issues um, with the torque locker. So it's not really a problem with the torque locker. The torque locker is amazing. We always love torque lockers and Toyotas, Jeeps, everything. Um, the problem is with the visco lock trying to overpower the torque locker and things like that. Visco lock causing issues with the torque locker, basically. So hopefully my issues are fixed now. Hopefully I didn't do any damage to my locker. There's a little bit of wear, not too bad. And now I just got to throw it back in the ATV, which is actually pretty easy. And I'll give you some steps for how to take it out. And it goes in the opposite way. Four times like me because Can-Am is junk. Um, so I leave the axles and everything intact. The ears on these axles make it really easy to get the axles out. So take a pry bar, pop both the axles out. Um, take the shocks So I'm going to start from the beginning. Take both shocks off. Boom, boom. That's easy. Two bolts. Then take out your lower control arm bolts. Those are kind of tricky because Can-Am almost lined these holes up to get the bolts out right, but they didn't. So you have to actually take a, take a wrench, pry the bolt down, and run it out the impact, and it'll come out of there pretty easy. Then take off your three bolts and nuts that hold the diff in place. Then come around to this side, cut your bands on your boots, um, slide the boots in on the front drive shaft, take the front diff, rotate it up a little bit, sink, and then you can take the drive shaft out. Then you put this arm up as high as you can to get this out of the way, turn the steering all the way to the right to get this um, far enough out of your way. Rotate the diff up as far as you can, lean it over and it comes out right here. It's tight to get it in and out of there, but if you've done it a few times, it's really not that bad. So diff's out, literally probably took me, I don't know, longer to make this video and get the diff out. No, not really, but um, really easy to get the diff out of this bike once you know what you're doing. And by bike, I mean quad for all you Canadians that are special and get mad about words and stuff. So I'm going to pop it open and see what All right, so there's the differential apart. Uh, you want to watch my other video for the install. It's really easy. You just pull this snap ring, pull that pin out, take out your two springs, pull your locker out. So there is some wear 
it's not as catastrophic as I expected it to be for how much it was acting up. The, uh, these are the engagement teeth. And they actually look pretty good, um, but you can see that there is some wear um, and that the edges of the teeth are kind of rolled in right there. So something weird's going on here. Um, not exactly sure this was causing all the problems, but you can look in the oil right here and you can see that there's a little bit of metal flake in the oil. So um, there's definitely some wear products. Not sure if it's something to do with Viscolock that's causing this, but I did delete the Viscolock like the instructions recommended. Uh, did not require that. So I gotta talk to um, Torque Locker and see what they say. But the bike was almost unrideable. What was happening was at a, a very sharp turn in uh, two wheel drive, the front end was locking in. It was kind of scary. So after downloading a uh, updated version of the install manual for the Torque Locker, it turns out that they are 100% recommending you do the full delete now, and they've actually updated their procedure for that. So I'm gonna go through and do that because I'm pretty sure that's what's causing my issue. They say directly in the new manual that if you leave this in there, it'll cause the problems I'm having with it locking up in two wheel drive and so on and so forth. Um, part of me wonders if this has to do with breaking axles, that maybe, you know, this visco lock crap is contributing to my axle issue. So I'm gonna go through and do the full manual and delete. Um, so the first thing you do is you take out these Allen bolts, uh, all these, and then you get it here, and then you take out two more Allen bolts, these two guys, from here to here. But uh, the instructions are really good. I'll post a link to the manual. But basically, I think my locker is okay. Um, I might have damaged it slightly by not doing this in the first place completely. But I mean, they updated their manual since I installed it. Um, if you look at the dates, mine came with a much older manual. So obviously, this is a common issue. People are complaining about it on the Can-Am. So make sure you delete your Visco lock when you install your torque lock. So here's what your Visco lock clutches look like. Um, as you can see, mine are totally burnt and just completely screwed. Uh, they're pretty much welded together or something. Pathetic. They expect those clutches to lock in a 32 inch tire. <laughs> Alright, so I went through and completely deleted the Visco lock. It's all empty and now you can see that it freewheels much easier. So that's holding one wheel, spinning the other one, two wheel drive. Freewheels very nicely both sides. So uh, the locker is working again. I will not have this crazy issue where the front end locks itself up and turns and tight turns and stuff so i think i fixed it hopefully the locker you know doesn't have any permanent damage it looks like it's going to be okay um i changed the oil in this thing a lot so i think it'll be fine just changed all the gear oils again because that's what you do on a can-am you change all the gear oils every ride because they are just the least waterproof things ever made um i'm gonna put my outlaws on here next my 31s and uh get rid of these bullshit tires probably go back to four paddles maybe who knows? Um, these tires were, would have been a cool thing for the sand, but because the differential was locking up weird, it was no fun to drive around. So um, hopefully it's straightened out now and uh, Visco, lock will stop, Visco lock will stop plaguing me. 